Ladies and gentlemen, the robot of the forbidden planet. Now, these are his eyes. These, his ears, tuned in all directions to receive the slightest sound. And this is his brain. Robbie, turn right. Turn left. Now back to the front. Robbie, tell me, can you speak? Yes, Dr. Morbius. What language? I am monitored, Dr. Morbius, to respond to 187 languages. Uh, well, I think English will be enough. Now, uh, tell me, what are your duties here on this planet? I clean your house. I drive your atomic car. I cook your meals. Oh, cook my meals. Now, how do you manage that? One introduces a sample of human food through this aperture. I have inside a small built-in chemical laboratory where I can analyze it. Later, I am able to reproduce identical molecules in any shape or quantity. Very good. Now then, tell me who built you. Dr. Morbius. Thank you. And 50 MGM technicians for the picture Forbidden Planet. Yes, Robbie, but when I want a commercial, I'll ask for it. Now go over there and shut yourself off. Yes, Dr. Morbius. But don't go away. We want to talk to you later on. Ladies and gentlemen... That is our robot, a housewife's dream. He's been very good on the set, done everything we've asked him to do. But I sometimes wonder, when we've finished work on stage 27, and uh, Robbie's here alone, when the technicians have all gone home, and the machinery is shut off, is he really off? Or does this machine, which we have built, this complicated metal being, does it really have a brain? I sometimes wonder. Forbidden planet. Forbidden planet indeed. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. At this time, I would like to go ahead and introduce our guest for the evening, Mr. Ken Hurt. Ken, are you out there, sir? Hello, Rick. I'm here. Good, good. Ken, uh, we have known each other via Facebook, uh, and we've messaged back and forth for, God, I think it's over a year now. Uh, yep. when, when we first met, I, I believe you were into ufology at that time, but you were kind of transitioning into, quote-unquote, uh, a UFO hunter. Um Correct. What 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 made you go to that next level uh, and and become somebody that that spends a lot of time uh, searching for these these objects? Um, uh, basically, really, it's just it's a very simple. Um, I just want to record it for what it is and put it out there and. Uh, Basically, I report, you decide. I, I just want the world to see what's going on, and I want the sheeple to get their head out of the sand and start asking questions. That's what I'm trying to do, basically. That's my mission, to get the sheeple's head out of the sand and people to start talking about this because um, how the media treats it and the government treats it and all that, it's just it's wrong. Right. I, I, I agree with you, Ken. And... Uh... Now, before getting into the actual UFO hunting, uh, were you into the UFO topic for for a long time, or is this something that... Uh... Yes, Rick. Oh, my God. Um, when I was eight years old, 1973, me and a, a friend of mine were playing in, the, in his front yard in Galax, Virginia, 
And uh, he looked up and pointed, big red ball of light, huge, flying through the air. And about a mile behind it was a military jet chasing it. And ever since then, I have been hooked. Is that right? So you had a yeah. sighting. You had your own sighting at a very young age. Um, yes. Now it back changed my whole world. Changed your whole world. Mm-hmm. So I know that when you when you decided to to go into this actual UFO hunting, you actually went out and and purchased what some night vision uh, right. equipment. And I, have some... a, I have a Yukon five by forty two night ranger. And also, I got a Sony, a Sony, a high-end Sony Handycam that can record in high definition, and it's so high def, it records in 60i, and you can make Blu-ray DVDs from it. Wow, that's great! Yeah. That's great. You know, because so many it's people. Got 120 times uh, digital zoom on it, and uh, it's just uh, it's an excellent camera, great for color shots. But most of the time, I have my Yukon on the tripod, and I'm holding my Sony. And it's so hard to try to operate two cameras at once. I get really frustrated. I can't make up my mind which one I want to use if I want to record in the night vision or if I want to record with the color. But I mainly record with the night vision because it gets a lot of things that you cannot see with your naked eye. And all the stuff that I got from Myrtle Beach, uh, well, most of it is that you can't see with the naked eye the last few nights. So, you know, I, I don't know if everybody understands this, but uh, when you're shooting with, with the night vision, uh, that signal has to go into the video camera kind of analog-wise. You're holding the video cam up to the output of the night vision, right? Well, yeah, what, what I'm doing, I have a, I have a mini DVR. So, what it's, yeah, it's going from analog and then getting changed to digital. So that's why, that's why I can, like, I have, one D, I have one mini DVR that will re only gives me 240p. I have another one that's better that will give me 480p that I use. So I have to have one. I have two. You always got to have a backup. And uh, I've just made, I made the mistake the last few nights of recording with my one that only is only two forty p. I need to uh, start using the one four eighty. I'm gonna use that one instead the rest of the time that I'm here. I, I just always wondered: is there any way uh, with those night vision cameras where you can, you know, hook hook the uh, the actual VCR camera or the recording? Uh, VHS or whatever uh, digital tape uh, without having to hold it up there. I mean, is there like lens things that you can plug in to where these become one combined unit or do you Not always have to of. sit there? Yeah, it, it makes it very difficult, all. especially when you're standing out there for a long time. Yeah. Right. So somebody send me um, send me a suggestion of a camera to get um, today on Google Plus. I'm gonna have him. I, I, I messaged him back and told him to send me the link. I want to look at it. It was only only about four hundred fifty dollars. He said, and he said it would record in night vision in color or black and white. Wow. Digitally. So, yes. Yeah, so maybe something new on the market. I don't know, but and that's cheap. Around four fifty. That's I'll very buy. very cheap. Yeah. Very cheap. Um, but most definitely, you know, UFO hunting with. Uh, one of these night vision cameras is is just a whole a whole nother thing isn't it yes it is it's amazing um the things that are out there around you that you cannot see because you know we only can see a certain wavelength right and anything outside that wavelength that's out there you're not going to pick up unless you do have a night vision right and, yep. uh, i mean i just get some i just get some amazing things that you cannot see with the naked eye with that night vision camera it is a uh, priceless to me so how how much time uh do you estimate that you spend uh, is this something you do once a week or or no. twice a week or once a month how much time are you well, spending right right well, when i when i get in a hunting mode i'm i'm every night out there um I'm, i i I, tr I try not to do it all the time because it'll make you go crazy you, you have to um you have to stay grounded and I've seen a lot of uh, UFO hunters go over the edge, and I don't want to end up like that either. A lot of people lose their minds because of this stuff. And, I mean, I've seen a lot of people crack up, and I just don't want it to happen to me. So I try not to do it full time. I take breaks. So uh, so you're saying that, that, that people just get so focused and almost addicted to to this? Yes, it's obsessed. Uh -huh. Obsessed, it just, it makes yeah. Them over the edge. It makes them go over the edge. They start losing it. 
they get paranoid. They get all kind of crazy stuff. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You don't want to do that. No. <laughs> Not at all. Well, I tell you, you know, there, there's just so much, uh, what should I say, bad video out there. Of course, yeah. YouTube is, is full of, of uh, fake, uh, erroneous uh, video. Uh, but I uh, I can vouch uh, for Mr. Uh, for Mr. Hurt uh, that uh, you you don't post that type of stuff. You you post no, I know <clears> what and you, you capture. And you'll never see any advertisements on any of my YouTube UFO videos. Yeah. You make money off of UFOs. It's it's a shame. You should not be doing that. That's just my how how I feel. Right, right. But, um... Well, I tell you, uh, we 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 should have more people like you um it very much upsets me when i see faked ufo footage because it just yeah, does so much damage to the to the the world of ufology yes it does and and, you, and if you'll notice most of the fakes are, have advertisements on their videos oh yeah yeah too you know like uh, like blake the fake cousins from third phase of the moon sorry blake but i had to say it he's just he's terrible for people like us yeah, um, I, I'll hold my comments regarding third phase of the moon, <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Third phase of the moon. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Well, listen, Ken. You... Oh, well, let me say something. Oh, I'm, sure. When I am hunting, when I'm hunting, Rick, I have um, all kinds of apps on my phone that I use. I use Flight Radar 24, and I make sure when I'm filming a UFO that I look at the radar and make sure it is not a commercial airline. So um, if it is, I won't post it. You know, so you, you've got to have a star map, you've got to have satellite tracker, and you've got to have flight radar 24 on your phone or on your computer going when you are hunting. It's a must. That's an excellent comment. And, and most of these apps that you talked about um, are either free or, or fairly low cost, They're right? all free. Oh, Everything really? All free? free. Yeah. Wow. wow. Wow! So there, yeah. yeah then go, to, go, go to uh, go to the Google Play Store and download quick. It's real easy, and uh, the people out there that are listening and watching the show, um, just all you got to do is go to the Google Play Store and download them in a second, and you're good to go. And they believe me, they help out greatly. So you do not mistake an airplane for a UFO because that's easy to do when you're looking through night vision. Right, right. So you you've brought. Four videos with you today, Ken, that we're going to look at. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with number one, which, from what I understand, has to do something about possibly uh, being scanned. And I'm going to I'm going to pull this up for the, uh, the viewers can see it. Now, okay. where... T tell us a little bit about where this takes place, what what the background of the video is, what was happening, okay. et cetera, et cetera. All righty. I, I just turned it on now. I'm watching it. Uh, right there at the beginning, in about three seconds, you will see it's an orange ball of light about the size of a Volkswagen. That right there, it's about, um, I would say, two or three miles away from me. And... Um, I was standing beside my camera. I wasn't even looking through it at the time. I just had it pointed in that direction. And then Allison Cruz and I were standing there talking to each other. And uh, she went, all of a sudden, she went, wow, wow, look, look, look. So I saw it coming through there to the left when it gets past the tree. And uh, I put my eye to the camera and uh, um, continued to record it. But while I was standing there, and when she first saw it, it sent out something it looks like it sends out sends out some kind of beam that hits me because i was standing to the right of my camera and you'll see the beam come down to the right of the camera where i'm standing it hits me and it looks like it bounces off of me and goes back to the ufo um so I, that's i've never that's just the weirdest strangest thing i've ever seen i've never seen that in any other people's videos i've never heard anybody talk about it and uh, it kind of freaked me out to tell you the truth when i saw it when allison did the uh, slow-mo uh, for me that you uh, people will watch here on YouTube and it just it really scared me to tell you the truth and um I, I was uh sick on my stomach nauseated for about a week after that I don't know if it had anything to do with it I don't know if it was psychological or what I don't know but it was just bizarre 
Um, I've never heard of that, never saw it, but it sends out a beam of something. You can see it through the night vision. It comes out of the UFO, hits me, and then looks like it goes back. Yeah, I mean, lo looking at this, very strange. It comes up over and, that and, tree, and uh -huh. it, it almost sends out, like, or it appears to send out some type of pulse uh, yep. where the object itself brightens for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Right, sends out this some sort of pulse, and then maybe a second later, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, all of a sudden it starts to illuminate. Um, yeah, and there was nothing uh, where you were at uh, where it could have been just a coincidence where uh, something else was going on near you that lit up or something, and exactly. A lot of times, if you walk in front of a night vision camera, it'll give us a, a similar effect like that. But you can plainly see that nobody walked in front of my camera. I mean, the the the, the frame, the the picture, the trees, the UFO, all stays there. Even when I get when I get hit with whatever hit me with it, and the lights up a little bit, you can see that. I mean, all the the pictures there, nothing walked in front of the camera or anything like that. Allison, only there was two of us there, me and Allison, and Allison was standing to my right as I was standing right to the right of the camera, right beside it. That is really bizarre. I, I have yeah. never seen anything quite like that. Rick, I ain't lying. It, it, it freaked me out. The next day, Allison goes, look at this. And I went, what? Yeah, you know, it, it kind of freaked me out. I went, what in the hell did that thing do to me? So you know, this was I with... This was with well, night I vision. Figure out, it was just checking out. It was checking out who I am. Maybe it was seeing if I had an implant or something. I don't know. Now, this is with night vision, right? Correct. So you didn't see or experience uh, no. any of this really totally invisible until you played it back and saw that until right. Allison did huh yep totally invisible now once once it it illuminates there on the right hand side and the screen darkens I guess then it goes back the sky kind of settles back into the color that it was originally i guess yeah, i'm watching it again right now yep that is that is strange yeah, it now is. i understand i've never heard of anybody i've never heard of any it, i mean i'm i network with ufo hunters all over the world and none of them has ever mentioned anything like that happening to them at all now you you did report this it's a unique it's a, it's a unique piece of uh video i'm I, telling you it is i i, I, I agree one of a kind if you ask me i i agree now you did try to report this and you got feedback saying that this was an airplane or something? No. No? I never I didn't report it at all. Oh, you didn't report this. Okay. I kept, I kept this to myself. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want anybody to see this really. The um, the, the video here that the 18 minute I mean the 18 second clip is on Allison Cruz at Seeing UFOs PA YouTube channel and it is it is um not public. Oh, okay. It's yeah, okay. it's unlisted. So I thought I'm I thought sure you had taken react to it, so I just I just kind of kept it quiet and left it alone. But um, now I guess we're going to show the world, and they can have the link if you'll put it up there for them. Absolutely, and they can look at it, and they can make up their own minds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Very strange. Yeah, kind of creepy, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> so let's move down now to uh, the one marked UFO number 17 okay now this one was taken oh yeah the, okay oh, hold on the last one was in murraysville pennsylvania right that was back in um i think that was back in uh june or july this one here number 17 is in murraysville pa at we're, we're in the parking lot of a golf course pro shop and if uh, people want to google map it or google earth it all you gotta do is look for murraysville pa and look for a golf course and you'll see where, where i was at and, um, now this was shot was direction, over... the direction the direction we are recording in is old coal mines. Okay, and this was shot with a regular a standard camcorder, color camcorder. Yeah, this is my yeah this is my this is my Sony Handycam on uh, full zoom. This was hovering over uh, somebody's house on the golf course about um, five hundred yards from me, and this popped up. This UFO popped up out of nowhere. And this was this 
second time I believe this happened tonight. It did a repeat performance about an hour before that. One popped up again over that same people's house over their roof and uh, hovered there for a good long while then moves off to the right. Um, they're, doing, they're, show, they're showing a pattern. Um, this video here is the second time it happened. It just appears out of nowhere, and then it'll hover for a while and then move off to the right. Now, when you get something like this, when you capture this, I mean, do you take steps to try to eliminate any other known possibilities, such as helicopters, yeah, airplanes? That's, that's what I was Yes, all the time. I mean, you have to. You don't want to give the debunkers any anim, 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 ammunition. Ammunition. You don't want to give the debunkers any... Uh, an, an, what am I trying to Ammunition. Ammunition. Oh, there it goes. There you go. Right. You don't want to give them anything that they can pick it apart with. So, I mean, all of, all the videos that I have posted, I have never had one negative comment yet onto YouTube. And usually the trolls are out there hard on you. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, so far, I haven't got any negative comments whatsoever on any video of a UFO that I have posted. I try to cover my butt. And do everything possible to eliminate everything de and debunk everything I can possible because that's how I go in. I, you know, I want to know too. I'll try to debunk it all first to make sure that what I'm getting and what I'm putting out there is the real deal. You have to. You have to be thorough. So I mean, again, the, the apps on my phone come in handy for doing that. But this was on, this was over somebody's roof, about 500 yards from me, and it, this thing was only about 100 feet up in the air. It was close. This was up close and personal. Wow. Now, was there any type of noise, sound uh, being emitted from this object at all? Rick, it's amazing. Zero, nothing. Wow. And you know, I mean, I would like to know wh wh where's the where's the power cord? Where are the fuel tanks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, this area that you shot this in, uh, so the 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 video before this and this one we're looking at right now were uh -huh. both taken uh, in the Murraysville, Pennsylvania area. Correct, yes, suburb of Pittsburgh. Now, you went there specifically because you had been told or been informed that they were getting a lot of activity in that area? Is, is yes, that... Um, I was friends, I was uh, uh, Facebook friends with Allison Cruz uh, long before I went up. And that was the specific reason for me going up there last summer was to UFO hunt. That was the only reason I went to Pennsylvania. And it's 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 been a hot spot since about two thousand and eight. Really? Yeah, me and my friend were uh, fishing on the Allegheny River one night back in two thousand and nine. About one in the morning, we saw an orange ball of light come out of the tree on the right side of the river where we we're fishing, about a hundred yards from us. Come out of a tree, come up over the river, hover, and then take off down the river. And my jaw hit the dock. I mean, it was just something else. He was a non-believer. He became a believer real quick. He got converted that day or that night. He used to drive me crazy, telling me I was crazy. Now he knows. <laughs> See, he's believing, Rick. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's people like you that, that spend the countless hours. You know, people see a five-minute or a two-minute video, but they don't always realize that it took... <laughs> Many, many hours to capture that. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you what. It's, it's boring out there some nights. I mean, some nights you don't get nothing. It's, just, you, it, it's like um, a friend told me, if you don't go fishing, you're not going to catch nothing. That's right. you got to put your line in the water. You know? Exactly. And, you know, I, just, I, I have been remarkably lucky. Every time I have gone hunting, I have got something. I don't know if I'm charmed. They're showing up for me. Who knows? I don't know. And I'm not going to speculate on it. I'm just going to say that I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've gotten something every time that I've went hunting. Well, let's move uh, on to the next two videos. The the third one hey, is those are here in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle North Myrtle Beach. North Myrtle Beach. Yep, Cherry Grove section. And the uh, the first one, uh, this is taken in night vision or with night vision. Correct. Mm -hmm. What? This is with my uh, mini DVR that has 480p. So this is a really this is pretty good resolution on this. Okay, and originally this was like a, a twenty-two minute uh, capture. You you edited it down to to about five minutes. I think you said. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. I'm on the wrong one. Then we're looking at the. Okay. Oh no, I'm on the I'm wrong one. The, okay, well, well let's okay, talk about the, this I'm one. I'm on the UF. I'm on the UFO famous Myrtle Beach UFOs. Okay. January sixteenth, two thousand and fourteen, and it's titled "Wow." 
and I cut it down to five minutes and seven seconds. Yeah, that's the one we're talking about. It was long. It was about twenty minutes. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> I had the night vision focused on a UFO that was hovering about, um, I'd say, a thousand feet off the water. And it was just hovering, it was just staying there for a long, long time. It was acting like a fake star, which they do. And, um, but I could tell what it was with the night vision. That it, stars don't reflect off the water. And if you look, well, if you saw the long vision, you would have seen that this thing is throwing a reflection off the water. Well, that's, stars don't throw, throw reflections off the water. No, and that was the first question I was going to ask you. I, I, it's very clear uh, in parts of this video, uh, the reflection, it's, it's a straight, reflective line down through the uh -huh. the lower middle screen reflecting off the ocean because you're you're standing on the beach i take it no i'm on my balcony i'm on oh. the uh, 17th floor on, on my balcony with my equipment set up oh okay i see um yeah, i got a really good view <laughs> you're looking straight out over the ocean you can right. i'm pretty sure that's the horizon line yes, out it is. there uh, about a quarter up from the screen is horizon okay and, and you can see the UFO clearly throwing a reflection down on the water. I mean, and you can see the stars are, that are around it. You can see like three of them, and they're not throwing any reflection off the water. And it is absolutely stationary. It, I mean, it is rock solid, not moving an inch. And I, for for fifteen minutes, I, I I let the camera just sit on it. I came back inside and sit down and smoked a cigarette. I go out every five minutes and check on it. It's still there, not moved a bit. And then that last time I went out, Rick, is when the light show starts happening. Now this what it looks like to me is happening here, Rick, is this what we like to call sentries. They have lookouts that come and they will hang out in the area or they'll fly around and make sure the coast is clear and then bam, something happens and it looks to me, Rick, I know this might sound crazy, but I believe five miles out in front of me there is a portal they are coming through. And they have since I have been here every night I've watched them come through at six thirty in the evening. Six thirty ish around the same time every night this happens. This is not military. This is not. They're not flares. You can clearly see these are UFOs coming out of nowhere and appearing here over the ocean. They, it, uh, call me crazy, but I think there's a portal out there. I used to dismiss the portal theories and not really dwell, um, dwell on it or think about it too much because um, I just thought maybe it's probably nonsense, but I don't anymore. Um, I think these people know what they're talking about now, and I truly apologize to all of you. <laughs> now – if I was a debunker looking at this, if this was an airplane <clears throat> coming straight at us, you know, straight towards the camera with its uh, lights well, on. I, I, I had flight radar 24 on, was showing no airplane at all. Showing no there airplane. There were, there was a few, there was a few, few planes, um, up over the North Carolina coast near Virginia, and there was a few planes down um, over the Georgia coast. There was none here at the time that I took this video. And you can also say, in order for those airplane lights to be reflecting off the water, that thing would have to be very low <laughs> and, uh -huh. and very close to you. I don't think a big airplane is going to be like that. No, uh, not at all. I don't. And, the, and and the flight patterns for planes here, they don't come straight in off the ocean like that, unless it's an international flight that I know of. And I, I called I called the Air Force Base and the next day, and they said they had nothing going on that night. Again, double checking, you know. Right, and as far as a helicopter, I I, I don't see that being a helicopter because no, it's... you would see you would you would see the navigation lights and the strobe lights blinking and all that stuff. I mean, this is a solid big ball of light about the size of a tractor trailer, if you ask me. Now, you, it, it, about at three minutes and twenty five seconds of the video, you can see it, an airplane that I recorded way out there going over. You'll see the blink of the yes, airplane. Yes, I see it. You can tell I see the difference. It. Big big difference. A big difference. Wow. Yeah, because it, I mean, there that is a bright light. I mean, it is blooming. Uh, in... I mean, uh, Rick, I mean, it lit up the, the whole ocean like a Christmas tree out there. I saw it with my naked eye. I mean, this this was is intense. And when I stepped out to check, I was looking, and I saw I saw one light up, and I grabbed the camera, and that's when you see me jerk it off of that stationary UFO that was hovering, and I move it over to the right, and you'll see them come in. That's where the portal's at, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's I'm gonna leave a, a question mark on that every time I say it. <laughs> now, you 
you mentioned to me that you've spoken to other people in this North Myrtle Beach area, yeah. and they I have... have a, I have a fellow UFO hunter friend here. His name is Joe Kernan. And he's told you that they've captured the same type of thing, right? Correct. And he also told me a story that a man told him, a man told him that he's been seeing this going on since the 1930s. You know, it it just, it, I find it so Before bizarre. <laughs> I find it very bizarre that, you know, something like this could be going on for, for so long, and uh, it hasn't, you know made the the news even you would i know well um they, actually the news last summer the news did a, a um a spot with joe kernan and inter was interviewing him and talking to him and also and interviewing a friend of his that also has been recording it so it has got a little bit of news oh oh because, because there's an air force base here rick most people are just writing them off as uh, military oh and that's, that's a great that's a great cover yeah what is it about these military bases that seem to attract these UFOs? Uh, they are highly interested in our um, warfare, uh, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They, they, love, they, they love military bases. I've seen many videos of them with the white orbs during the daytime are following around and checking planes out and stuff. And uh, I don't know what it is. I guess they're just checking for nuclear weapons as far as I, I mean, that's the only thing I can figure out, just seeing if we're carrying nukes. Very strange. Well, yeah. let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull up this. This last one. Right, well, um, I got that my first night here. This is the. And um, a, a bunch of people emailed me after I posted this video on YouTube, and I posted it on um, Myrtle Beach UFO sightings Facebook page, and uh, I got all kind of emails back. On people were telling me I saw the same thing, Ken. I saw the same thing, Ken. I mean, just over and over again. Now so, this this I looks was, like the the exact it looks exactly like the last video we we looked at. This is a different sorta, day. Yeah, this one this one this one is moving off to the right. It's it's flying through the air, and it it is about the size of a tractor trailer. It is huge. It's not that far out from me. Okay, so and, just uh, to make sure that we're talking about the same thing here, this is the one. It's it's sitting right over the clouds. Uh huh. Right over the cloud. There's two cloud. Well, there's a layer of cloud that's long that takes up the whole frame, and then there's two on top of that. Correct. Right. Right. All right. And it's sitting on top of the the right one. Well, not exactly in the middle of it. On the left hand side of the right cloud. Correct. And you, and you can see it's not an it's it's not a round ball. It's kind of oblong, smashed down, sort of like an egg. Yeah. And to the right side of it, there's a little protrusion that looks weird. I I see that. I see that. Yep. And if if you watch the video now, it'll start moving. It'll take off. It, I believe this is the one. It, it's not just sitting there. It, I believe it starts moving. If I'm correct. Yeah, I mean, what now. could what could produce? You know, what known things could produce that amount of, of light? Uh, now, of course, we're looking through I'm, night I'm, vision, and it's amplified. But still, uh, you see airplanes going by. There are little dots in in the the sky, little flashing dots. Uh, this thing. You can tell the difference. Yeah, I mean, you can see there's a, there's a star in the frame to the right of the UFO and one to the left of it that that are a l little bit up from it. Yep. I mean, you can tell the, the big difference, it's, and you can tell it's not the moon. The moon was way up high over my head in the sky that night. Now, that I guess the other to, question to, is, to horizon. could this be a planet? Could you be seeing uh, the reflection of the sun on a planet? I mean, have no, not at all. I I, I checked my um, star map on it. Uh, the the closest brightest thing that was near that was the star Sirius. That was the brightest thing in the sky that night, and it, it had long moved on up in the sky with, uh, with Orion. And, that, and Sirius and Orion is way up and over to the left of this frame. I'm, I'm pointed just about straight out and to the right a little bit from where I am, my balcony is. That, that is just yeah, so Yeah, see, it has bizarre. moved now, see? It's not, on, it's not to the left of that cloud now. I'm looking at it, I'm watching it. It has moved over to the right some. Yeah, I I don't know it. I just can't think of anything that would produce that much light uh, and be that stationary. And it Not appears close. That, that, that's known to human beings right now. Right. Uh, it's it's probably zero point energy is what they're using. Probably that's my guess. That's my theory. 
Well, I tell you, um, I'll uh, I'll bring up the links uh, for the for the viewers so uh, they can uh, go look at these for themselves. Can can people uh, contact you if uh, yes, they, can. they have questions sure. I'll, or? I'll... Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me, let me give them my, I'll give them my email address. I'll give them my Facebook. I'll give them my YouTube. Well, what's your, uh, what's your email? Me, uh, pardon? What's your email address? My email is hurtken at gmail.com. H-U-R-T-K-E-N. Just my name backwards at gmail.com. You can email me there. Okay. Um, if you'd like to, you can, um, you can message me on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com black slash black slash backslash Hurt Ken, again, H-U-R-T-K-E-N. Um, you can also go to my UFO group that I created uh, about a year and a half ago called UFOs Are Real Group, No Love and Light Allowed. Okay. And that is a face. Yeah, that's, yeah, some people with the love and light thing, they're coming to save us and all that. Just, they turn into religion. Uh, more power to them. Um, UFOs, are real, UFOs Are Real Group, No Love and Light Allowed, and that is a Facebook.com backslash groups backslash ufo planet zoo all one word ufo p-l-a-n-e-t-z-o-o and you can go to my youtube channel that's youtube uh user hurt ken h-u-r-t-k-e-n again okay very good very good i'll put this up there and uh, the viewers uh, uh could uh get in touch with you directly if you have questions for ken i'm sure you would not mind uh, talking to them. You're you're a friendly kind not of guy. Not at all. Any seri any serious people with serious questions, um, I will respond to. I promise. Well, I know that we have uh, viewers out in this area um, of Myrtle Beach there, uh, so perhaps there's some viewers watching tonight that have seen uh, the same thing that Ken has captured here. Uh, if so, uh, I'm sure you'd love to talk to them to to be able to collaborate uh, on uh, or speculate on what mm -hmm. what the hell this thing could be. <laughs> I know uh, it. Now, does it? Sure, I, I, I'd love to talk to people about it because um, I, I just the, the conversations are great about this phenomenon. So please, people, um, you're out there, you're listening, you want to watch the show, contact me if you have any questions, and we can talk. Excellent, excellent, and now. Was this thing showing up basically every night, or was it yes. once in a while? Every night I have been here. Um, uh, I didn't watch last night. I was busy, but um, I'm going to be again tonight. I'll be. Um, I'll have all the all the gear hooked up and ready to go. I'm going to. I bet you the exact same thing will happen around 6:30 starting tonight that it has been all week since I've been here. I've been here Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday night. So this will be my fifth night here, and I've captured um, UFOs. Four, I mean, three out of the four of the nights that I've been here so far. Last night I did not look because I was busy, was busy, but I'll be back at it tonight. Amazing stuff, Ken. Very amazing yeah, stuff. Great. It is. It's, it is um, kind of creepy, but also puts a smile on my face, too. <laughs> so would you recommend uh, uh, people becoming UFO hunters, or would you tell them uh, caution or... I know you had mentioned um, well, the thing about not getting obsessed, but... Right, yeah, you have to be careful about that. Uh, a lot of people do get obsessed, and I've seen people go over the edge. Um, just You have to stay grounded when you're doing it. Don't make it an obsession. Just do it, do it, and do it for a purpose um, and to, to show the world. Um, and just um, and you're, you're going to get hit with uh, the trolls and the debunkers, and they're going to try to uh, you know, just make you out to be somebody that you're not you're going to get uh, yeah. verbally assaulted and everything else um just ask allison cruz what happened to her and, you have uh, to have some thick skin in this game that's yes, for sure you, do. you have to have very thick skin and let this stuff go over your head and uh, just smile yep basically very good well ken thanks so much for for being here tonight sharing some of your uh your work with us uh, i find it well, a fascinating stuff yep hey can i say hi to a couple people and uh, thank them Sure. For helping me out for sure. the last couple of years. I want to say uh, Allison Cruz is awesome. Um, she's the real deal. She has some of the best footage, the smoking gun footage I've ever seen in my life, of fake planes and helicopters, the orange balls of light morphing and turning into um, airplanes and helicopters. She has that. Uh, Joe Kernan here in Myrtle Beach, thank you uh, for all your help and getting me set when I got here. Uh, Joe Ruggiero, uh thank you very much for the help and uh, your, our conversations. And David Stennett up in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank him, too. He's all, I've also been UFO hunting with him and Allison at the same time. Uh, 
great guy, knows his stuff, and he thinks outside the box like Jacques Vallée, which is awesome. Yes, yeah, David's been on uh, on the program before. Very interesting. A lot of years, a cool. lot of years uh, of experience with Dave. Yes, definitely. He is uh, he is uh, he is the go to for me whenever I have any questions. There you go. It's always good to have a mentor. That's for sure. No doubt. No doubt. He's the man. I love you, Dave. <laughs> All right. Very good, Ken. Well, listen. Uh, thanks again. We'll of course be staying in touch, and yeah. uh, if uh, you know you you uh, want to come back in uh, in a little while, show us what else you got. Uh, okay. You're always welcome. I would love to. I appreciate that. Yeah, and um. I get anything crazy, I'll be uh, emailing and sending the link to you. All right. Very good. Very good. I appreciate appreciate it. All right, Ken. Well, listen, you have a great rest of the day, and uh, thanks again for being on the show. Okay, Rick. I appreciate it. Thank Uh you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. is to keep it you believe it when you find something screaming across your mind green slime well i tell you uh we 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 should have more people like you. Um, it very much upsets me when I see faked UFO footage because it just yeah, does so much damage to the to the to the world of ufology. Yes, it does. And and, you, and if you'll notice, most of the fakes are, have advertisements on their videos. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too, you know, like uh, like Blake the fake cousins from Third Phase of the Moon. Sorry, Blake, but I had to say it. He's just he's terrible for people like us. Yeah, um, I, I'll hold my comments regarding third phase of the moon, <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Third phase of the moon. <laughs> uh, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Well, listen, Ken. You oh, well, let me say something. Oh, about sure. That. When I am hunting, when I'm hunting, Rick, I have um, all kinds of apps on my phone that I use. I use Flight Radar 24, and I make sure when I'm filming a UFO that I look at the radar and make sure it is not a commercial airline. So um, if it is, I won't post it. You know, so you, you've got to have a star map, you've got to have satellite tracker, and you've got to have flight radar 24 on your phone or on your computer going when you are hunting. It's a must. That's an excellent comment. And and most of these apps that you talked about um, are either free or, or fairly low cost, They're right? All free. Oh, Everything really? All free. free? Yeah. Wow. Wow! So there, yeah. Then go, to, go, go to uh, go to the Google Play Store and download quick. It's real easy, and uh, the people out there that are listening and watching the show, um, just all you got to do is go to the Google Play Store and download them in a second, and you're good to go. And they believe me, they help out greatly. So you do not mistake an airplane for a UFO because that's easy to do when you're looking through night vision. Right, right. So you you've brought. Four videos with you today, Ken, that we're going to look at. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with number one, which, from what I understand, has to do something about possibly uh, being scanned. And I'm going to I'm going to pull this up for the uh, the viewers can see it. Now, okay. where. T- tell us a little bit about where this takes place, what what the background of the video is, what was happening, okay. et cetera, et cetera. Sure. All righty. I, I just turned it on now. I'm watching it. Uh, right there at the beginning, in about three seconds, you will see it's an orange ball of light about the size of a Volkswagen. That right there, it's about, um, I would say, two or three miles away from me. And... Um, I was standing beside my camera. I wasn't even looking through it at the time. I just had it pointed in that direction. And I've never seen anything quite like that. Rick, I ain't lying. It, it freaked me out. The next day, Allison goes, look at this. And I went, what? Yeah, you know, it kind of freaked me out. I went, what in the hell did that thing do to me? So this was I with... Guess it was just, 
This was with well, night I vision. Figure out. It was just checking out. It was checking out who I am. Maybe it was seeing if I had an implant or something. I don't know. Now this is with night vision, right? Correct. So you didn't see or experience uh, no. any of this, really? Totally invisible. Until you played it back and saw that. Until right. Allison did, huh? Yep. Totally invisible. Now, once. Once it, it illuminates there on the right-hand side and the screen darkens, I guess then it goes back, the sky kind of settles back into the color that it was originally, I guess. Yeah. I'm watching it again right now, yep. That is, that is strange. Yeah, it now, is. I understand... I've never heard of anybody... I've never heard of any... I mean, I'm, I network with... UFO hunters all over the world, and none of them has ever mentioned anything like that happening to them at all. Now, you you did report this. It's a unique, it's a, it's a unique piece of uh, video. I'm I, telling you, it is. I, 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 I agree. one of a kind, if you ask me. I, I agree. Now, you did try to report this, and you got feedback saying that this was an airplane or something? No. No. I never, I didn't report it at all. Oh, you didn't report this. Okay. I kept, I kept this to myself. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want anybody to see this really. The, um, the, the video here, that the 18 minute, I mean, the 18 second clip is on Alice and Cruz, the Seeing UFOs PA YouTube channel, and it is, it is um, not public. Oh, okay. It's yeah, okay. it's unlisted. So I thought, I'm, I'm I thought you had taken. Will react to it. So I just, I just kind of kept it quiet and left it alone. But um, now I guess we're going to show the world, and they can have the link if you'll put it up there for them. Absolutely. Look at it, and they can make up their own minds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Very strange. Yeah, kind of creepy, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, let's move down now to uh, the one marked UFO number seventeen. Okay. Now this one was taken. Oh yeah. The, okay. Oh, hold on. The last one was in Murraysville, Pennsylvania. Right. That was back in, um, I think that was back in uh, June or July. This one here, number 17, is in Murraysville, PA. At we're, we're in the parking lot of a golf course pro shop. And if uh, people want to Google map it or Google Earth it, all you got to do is look for Murraysville, PA, and look for a golf course, and you'll see where I, where I was at. And um, Now, this was shot was over... The direction, the direction we are recording in is old. I go out every five minutes and check on it. It's still there. It's not moved a bit. And then that last time I went out, Rick, is when the light show starts happening. Now this what it looks like to me is happening here, Rick, is this what we like to call sentries. They have lookouts that come and they will hang out in the area or they'll fly around and make sure the coast is clear and then bam, something happens and it looks to me, Rick, I know this might sound crazy, but I believe five miles out in front of me there is a portal they are coming through and they have since i have been here every night i've watched them come through at 6 30 in the evening 6 30 ish around the same time every night this happens this is not military this is not they're not flares you can clearly see these are ufos coming out of nowhere and appearing here over the ocean they uh, uh, call me crazy but i think there's a portal out there i used to demiss the portal theories and not really dwell, um, dwell on it or think about it too much because um, I just thought maybe it's probably nonsense, but I don't anymore. Um, I think these people know what they're talking about now. And I truly apologize to all of you. <laughs> now, if I was a debunker looking at this, if this was an airplane <clears throat> coming straight at us, you know, straight towards the camera with its uh, lights well, on. I, I had flight radar 24 on, was showing no airplane at all. Showing no airplane. There were, there was a few, there was a few, few planes um, up over the North Carolina coast near Virginia, and there was a few planes down um, over the Georgia coast. There was none here at the time that I took this video. And you can also say, in order for those airplane lights to be reflecting off the water, that thing would have to be very low <laughs> and, uh -huh. and very close to you. I don't think a big airplane is going to be like that. No, uh, not at all. I don't. And, 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 and the flight patterns for planes here, they don't come straight in off the ocean like that unless it's an international flight that I know of. 
And I, I called I called the Air Force Base and the next day, and they said they had nothing going on that night. Again, double checking, you know. Right, and as far as a helicopter, I I, I don't see that being a helicopter because no, it's... you would see you would you would see the navigation lights and the strobe lights blinking and all that stuff. I mean, this is a solid big ball of light about the size of a tractor trailer, if you ask me. Now, you, it, it, about three minutes and twenty five seconds of the video, you can see it, an airplane that I recorded. Way out there, going over, you'll see the blink of the yes, airplane. Yes, I see it. You can I tell the difference. It. Big, big difference. A big difference. Wow. Yeah, because it. I mean, there. That is a bright light. I mean, it is blooming. Uh, in. I mean, it, uh, Rick. I mean, it lit up the the whole ocean like a Christmas tree. Stage twenty seven, and uh, Robbie's here alone. When the technicians have all gone home, and the machinery is shut off, is he really off? Or does this machine which we have built, this complicated metal being, does it really have a brain? I sometimes wonder. Forbidden planet. Forbidden planet indeed. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. At this time, I would like to go ahead and introduce our guest for the evening. Mr. Ken Hurt. Ken, are you out there, sir? Hello, Rick. I'm here. Good, good. Ken, uh, we have known each other via Facebook, uh, and we've messaged back and forth for, God, I think it's over a year now. Uh, yep. when, when we first met, I, I believe you were into ufology at that time, but you were kind of transitioning into, quote-unquote, uh, a UFO hunter. Um, Correct. What, what, what made you go to that next level uh, and, and become somebody that, that spends a lot of time uh, searching for these, these objects? Um, uh, basically, really, it's, just, it's a very simple... Um... I just want to record it for what it is and put it out there. And uh, basically, I report, you decide. I, I just want the world to see what's going on, and I want the sheeple to get their head out of the sand and start asking questions. That's what I'm trying to do, basically. That's my mission, to get the sheeple's head out of the sand and people to start talking about this because um, how the media treats it and the government treats it and all that, it's just it's wrong. Right, I, I I agree with you, Ken. And uh, now, before getting into the actual UFO hunting, uh, were you into the UFO topic for for a long time, or is this something that? Uh... Yes, Rick. Oh my God! Um, when I was eight years old, nineteen seventy three, me and a, a friend of mine were playing in the in his front yard in Galax, Virginia, and uh, he looked up and pointed. Big red ball of light, huge, flying through the air, and about a mile behind it was a military jet chasing it. And ever since then, I have been hooked. Is that right? So you had a yeah. sighting, you had your own sighting at a very young age. Um, yes. Now it back changed my whole world. Changed, say, two or three miles away from me, and. Um, I was standing beside my camera. I wasn't even looking through it at the time. I just had it pointed in that direction, and then Allison Cruz and I were standing there talking to each other, and uh, she went, all of a sudden, she went, wow, wow, look, look, look. So I saw it coming through there to the left when it gets past the tree, and uh, I put my eye to the camera and uh, um, continued to record it, but while I was standing there, and when she first saw it, it sent out something. It looks like it sends out, sends out some kind of beam that hits me because I was standing to the right of my camera. And you'll see the beam come down to the right of the camera where I'm standing. It hits me, and it looks like it bounces off of me and goes back to the UFO. Um, so I, that's, I've never, that's just the weirdest, strangest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen that in any other people's videos. I've never heard anybody talk about it. And it uh, kind of freaked me out, to tell you the truth, when I saw it. When Allison did the uh, slow-mo uh, for me that you, uh, people will watch here on YouTube, and it just it really scared me, to tell you the truth. And um, I, I was 
uh, sick on my stomach, nauseated for about a week after that. I don't know if it had anything to do with it. I don't know if it was psychological or what. I don't know, but it was just bizarre. Um, I've never heard of that, never saw it, but it sends out a beam of something. You can see it through the night vision. It comes out of the UFO, hits me, and then looks like it goes back. Yeah, I mean, lo looking at this, very strange. It comes up over and, that and, tree, and uh -huh. it, it almost sends out, like, or it appears to send out some type of pulse uh, yep. where the object itself brightens for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Right, sends out this some sort of pulse, and then maybe a second later, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, all of a sudden it starts to illuminate. Um, yeah, and there was nothing uh, where you were at, uh, where it could have been just a coincidence where uh, something else was going on near you that lit up or something, and exactly. A lot of times, if you walk in front of a night vision camera, it'll give us a, a similar effect like that. But you can plainly see that nobody walked in front of my camera. I mean, the the the, the frame, the the picture, the trees, the UFO, all stays there. Even when I get when I get hit with whatever hit me with it, and the lights up a little bit, you can see that. I mean, all the the pictures there, nothing walked in front of the camera or anything like that. Allison, only there was two of us there, me and Allison, and Allison was standing to my right as I was standing right to the right of the camera, right beside it. That is really bizarre. I, I have yeah. never seen anything quite like that. Rick, I ain't lying. It, it, it freaked me out. The next day, Allison goes, look at this. And I went, what? Yeah, you know, it, it kind of freaked me out. I went, what in the hell did that thing do to me? So you know, this was I with... Guess it was just, this was with... I put it out there, and uh, it's basically, I report, you decide. I, I just want the world to see what's going on, and I want the sheeple to get their head out of the sand and start asking questions. That's what I'm trying to do, basically. That's my mission, to get the sheeple's head out of the sand and people to start talking about this because um, how the media treats it and the government treats it and all that, it's just it's wrong. Right. I, I, I agree with you, Ken. And uh, now, before getting into the actual UFO hunting, uh, were you into the UFO topic for, for a long time, or is this something that... Uh, yes, Rick. Oh, my God. Um, when I was eight years old, 1973, me and a, a friend of mine were playing in, the, in his front yard in Galax, Virginia. And uh, he looked up and pointed, big red ball of light, huge, flying through the air. And about a mile behind it was a military jet chasing it. And ever since then, I have been hooked. Is that right? So you had a yeah. sighting. You had your own sighting at a very young age. Um, yes. Now it back changed my whole world. Changed your whole world. Mm -hmm. So I know that when you when you decided to to go into this actual UFO hunting, you actually went out and and purchased what some night vision uh, right. equipment and have some. A, have a Yukon uh, five by forty two Night Ranger. And also, I got a Sony, a Sony, a high-end Sony Handycam that can record in high definition, and it's so high def, it records in 60i, and you can make Blu-ray DVDs from it. Wow, that's great! Yeah. That's great. You know, because so many it's got people 20 times uh, digital zoom on it, and uh, it's just uh, it's an excellent camera, great for color shots. But most of the time, I have my Yukon on the tripod, and I'm holding my Sony. And it's so hard to try to operate two cameras at once. I get really frustrated. I can't make up my mind which one I want to use if I want to record in the night vision or if I want to record with the color. But I mainly record with the night vision because it gets a lot of things that you cannot see with your naked eye. And all the stuff that I got from Myrtle Beach, uh, well, most of it is that you can't see with the naked eye the last few nights. So, you know, I, I don't know if everybody understands this, but... Uh, when you're shooting with, with the night vision, uh, that signal has to go into the video camera kind of analog wise. You're holding the video cam up to the output of the night vision, right? Well, yeah, what, what I'm doing, I have a, I have a mini DVR. So what it's, yeah, it's going from analog and then getting changed to digital. So that's why, that's why I can like. I have one. D I have one mini DVR that will. Rec was this thing showing up basically every night, or was it yes. once in a while? Every night I have been here. Uh, uh, I didn't watch last night. I was busy, 
but um, I'm going to be again tonight. I'll be, um, I'll have all the all the gear hooked up and ready to go. I'm going to. I bet you the exact same thing will happen around 6:30 starting tonight that it has been all week since I've been here. I've been here Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday night. So this will be my fifth night here, and I've captured um, UFOs. Four, I mean, three out of the four of the nights that I've been here so far. Last night I did not look because I was busy, was busy, but I'll be back at it tonight. Amazing stuff, Ken. Very amazing yeah, it's stuff. Great. It is. It's, it is um, kind of creepy, but also puts a smile on my face, too. <laughs> so would you recommend uh, uh, people becoming UFO hunters, or would you tell them uh, caution or... I know you had mentioned um, well, the thing about not getting obsessed, but... Right, yeah, you have to be careful about that. Uh, a lot of people do get obsessed, and I've seen people go over the edge. Um, just You have to stay grounded when you're doing it. Don't make it an obsession. Just do it, do it, and do it for a purpose um, and to, to show the world. Um, and just um, and you're, you're going to get hit with uh, the trolls and the debunkers, and they're going to try to uh, you know, just make you out to be somebody that you're not you're going to get uh, yeah. verbally assaulted and everything else um just ask allison cruz what happened to her and, you have uh, to it, have some thick skin in this game that's yes, for sure you, do. you have to have very thick skin and let this stuff go over your head and uh, just smile yep basically very good well ken thanks so much for for being here tonight sharing some of your uh your work with us uh, i find it well, a fascinating stuff yep hey can i say hi to a couple people and uh, thank them Sure. For helping me out for sure. the last couple of years. I want to say uh, Allison Cruz is awesome. Um, she's the real deal. She has some of the best footage, the smoking gun footage I've ever seen in my life, of fake planes and helicopters, the orange balls of light morphing and turning into um, airplanes and helicopters. She has that. Uh, Joe Kernan here in Myrtle Beach, thank you uh, for all your help and getting me set when I got here. Uh, Joe Ruggiero, uh thank you very much for the help and uh, your, our conversations. And David Stennett up in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank him, too. He's all, I've also been UFO hunting with him and Allison at the same time. Uh, great guy, knows his stuff, and he thinks outside the box like Jacques Vallée, which is awesome. Yes, yeah, David's been on, uh, on the program before. Very interesting. A lot of years, cool. a lot of years uh, of experience with Dave. Yes, definitely. He is, uh, he, is, uh, he is the go-to for me whenever I have any questions. There you go. It's always good to have a mentor, that's for sure. No doubt, no doubt. He's the man. I love you, Dave. <laughs> All right. Very good, Ken. Well, listen, uh, thanks again. We'll, of course, be staying in touch. And yeah. uh, if, uh, you know, you, you uh, want to come back. It... With Orion. And, that, and Sirius and Orion is way up and over to the left of this frame. I'm, I'm pointed just about straight out and to the right a little bit from where my, my, my balcony is. That that is just yeah. See, so it has bizarre. moved now. See, it's not on. It's not to the left of that cloud now. I'm looking at. I'm watching. It has moved over to the right some. Yeah, I I don't know. It I just can't think of anything that would produce that much light uh, and be that stationary. No. And it not appears close. That, that, that's known to human beings right now. Right. Uh, it's, it's probably zero point energy is what they're using, probably. That's my guess. That's my theory. Well, I tell you, um, I'll, uh, I'll bring up the links uh, for, the, for the viewers so uh, they can uh, go look at these for themselves. Can, can people uh, contact you if uh, yes, they, can. they have questions sure. I'll, or... I'll, yeah, yeah, sure. Let me let me give them my. I'll give them my email address. I'll give them my Facebook. I'll give them my YouTube. What's your um, What's your email? Me, my, pardon? What's your email address? My email is hurtken at gmail dot com. H u r t k e n. Just my name backwards at gmail dot com. You can email me there. Okay. Um, if you'd like to, you can um. You can message me on Facebook. It's uh, facebook dot com black slash black slash backslash Hurt Ken, again, H-U-R-T-K-E-N. Um, you can also go to my UFO group that I created uh, about a year and a half ago called UFOs Are Real Group, No Love and Light Allowed. Okay. And that is a face. Yeah, that's, yeah, some people with the love and light thing, they're coming to save us and all that. Just, they turn into religion. Uh, more power to them. Um, UFOs are real. UFOs Are Real Group, No Love and Light Allowed, and that is Facebook.com backslash groups. 
backslash UFO Planet Zoo, all one word, UFO, P-L-A-N-E-T-Z-O-O. And you can go to my YouTube channel. That's YouTube uh, user Hurt Ken, H-U-R-T-K-E-N again. Okay. Very good. Very good. I'll put this up there, and uh, the viewers uh, uh, could uh, get in touch with you directly if you have questions for Ken. I'm sure you would not mind uh, talking to them. You're, you're a friendly kind not of guy. Not at all. Any, seri any serious people with serious questions, um, I will respond to, I promise. Well, I know that we have uh, viewers out in this area um, of Myrtle Beach there. Uh, so perhaps there's some viewers watching tonight that have seen uh, the same thing that Ken has captured here. Uh, if so, uh, I'm sure you'd love to talk to him to, to be able to collaborate uh, on uh, or speculate to that next level uh, and, and become somebody that, that spends a lot of time uh, searching for these, these objects. Um, uh, basically, really, it's, just, it's a very simple. Um, I just want to record it for what it is and put it out there and uh, basically I report you decide I, I just want the world to see what's going on and I want the sheeple to get their head out of the sand and start asking questions that's what I'm trying to do basically that's my mission to get the sheeple's head out of the sand and people to start talking about this because um, how the media treats it and the government treats it and all that it's just it's wrong Right. I, I, I agree with you, Ken. And uh, now before getting into the actual UFO hunting, uh, were you into the UFO topic for, for a long time or is this something that? Uh, yes, Rick. Oh, my God. Um, when I was eight years old, 1973, me and a, a friend of mine were playing in, the, in his front yard in Galax, Virginia. And uh, he looked up and pointed big red ball of light, huge, flying through the air, and about a mile behind it was a military jet chasing it. And ever since then, I have been hooked. Is that right? So you had a yeah. sighting, you had your own sighting at a very young age. Um, yes. Now it back, changed my whole world. Changed your whole world. Mm -hmm. So... I know that when you, when you decided to to go into this actual UFO hunting, you actually went out and and purchased what some night vision uh, right. equipment. And I have some... a Yukon five by forty two Night Ranger, and also I got a Sony a Sony a high end Sony Handycam that can record in high definition, and it's so high def it records in sixty i, and you can make Blu ray DVDs from it. Wow, that's great. That's great, you know, because so many people. Got 120 times uh, digital zoom on it, and uh, it's just uh, it's an excellent camera, great for color shots. But most of the time, I have my Yukon on the tripod, and I'm holding my Sony, and it's so hard to try to operate two cameras at once. I get really frustrated. I can't make up my mind which one I want to use if I want to record in the night vision or if I want to record with the color. But I mainly record with the night vision because it gets a lot of things that you cannot see with your naked eye. And all the stuff that I got from Myrtle Beach, uh, well, most of it is that you, you can't see with the naked eye the last few nights. So, you know, I, I don't know if everybody understands this, but uh, when you're shooting with, with the night vision, uh, that signal... Some people with the love and light thing, they're coming to save us and all that. Just, they turn into religion. Uh, more power to them. Um, UFOs are real. UFOs are real group. No love and light allowed. And that is uh, Facebook.com backslash groups backslash UFO Planet Zoo. All one word. UFO P L A N E T Z O O. And you can go to my YouTube channel. That's YouTube uh, user Hurt Ken H U R T K E N again. Okay. Very good. Very good. I'll put this up there, and uh, the viewers uh, uh, could uh, get in touch with you directly if you have questions for Ken. I'm sure you would not mind uh, talking to them you're you're a friendly kind not of guy. at all any seri any serious people with serious questions um i will respond to i promise well i know that we have uh viewers out in this area um of myrtle beach there uh so perhaps there's some viewers watching tonight that have seen uh the same thing that ken has captured here 
Uh, if so, uh, I'm sure you'd love to talk to him to to be able to collaborate uh, on uh, or speculate on what mm-hmm. what the hell this thing could be. <laughs> I know it. Now, does it? Sure, I, I, I love to talk to people about it because uh, I, I just the, the conversations are great about this phenomenon. So please, people, um, you're out there, you're listening, you want to watch the show, contact me if you have any questions, and we can talk. Excellent, excellent. And now. Was this thing showing up basically every night, or was it yes. once in a while? Every night I have been here. Uh, uh, I didn't watch last night. I was busy, but um, I'm going to be again tonight. I'll be. Uh, I'll have all the all the gear hooked up and ready to go. I'm going to. I bet you the exact same thing will happen around 6:30 starting tonight that it has been all week since I've been here. I've been here Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday night. So this will be my fifth night here, and I've captured um, UFOs. Four, I mean, three out of the four of the nights that I've been here so far. Last night I did not look because I was busy, was busy, but I'll be back at it tonight. Amazing stuff, Ken. Very amazing yeah, stuff. Great. It is. It's, it is um, kind of creepy, but also puts a smile on my face, too. <laughs> so would you recommend uh, uh, people becoming UFO hunters, or would you tell them uh, caution or... I know you had mentioned um, well, the thing about not getting obsessed, but... Right, yeah, you have to be careful about that. Uh, a lot of people do get obsessed, and I've seen people go over the edge. Um, just You have to stay grounded when you're doing it. Don't make it an obsession. Just do it, do it, and do it for a purpose um, and to, to show the world. Um, and just um, and you're, you're going to get hit with uh, the trolls and the debunkers, and they're going to try to uh, you know just make you out to be somebody that you're not you're going to get uh, yeah. verbally assaulted and everything else um just ask allison cruz what happened to her and, you have uh, to it, have some thick skin in this game that's yes for sure. you 